아버지요. 
give our men and God a round of applause. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I say praise to Lewis. I say praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. and turn with me uh, to the book of St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter 13. We're going to continue our teaching on are you producing in the kingdom? And I just trust the Holy Spirit just to have his way on today and that each and every one of you would be filled with the word of God and you continue to move forward in him because it's all about him. That's who it's about. Amen. It's about him. And also I want to say Thank you to all of you who are streaming in on this morning. God bless and God be with you all here on this Sunday, May the 2nd, 2021. God, God has brought us into another month. Amen. We are yeah. almost halfway through yeah. this year. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. You know, next day, you know, we'll be talking about Thanksgiving. Well, you know, we got anniversary coming up. You know, we got our true anniversary, anniversary coming up. Not so much that... We might celebrate or be celebrating the way we normally did it uh, before the pandemic. But that's in the, what's the end of June. And then next thing you know, we'll be talking about uh, the 4th of July. And then we got, is it Labor Day? Labor Day is coming. And then we got Thanksgiving. You know, and then y'all, well, we call it Hallelujah Night. We'll leave it at that. And then we talk about Christmas. Christmas would be up on us before we even know it. Amen. But I do want to say thank you and appreciate you all. Those who are streaming in, all our child family that streaming in, we appreciate you very much. We always send a shout out to our dear, lovely, uh, beloved pastor, Valerie Holcomb. God bless you. God keep you. And the congregation continue to move forward in the name of the Lord. We thank God for all the CCI pastors and those that be streaming in. I appreciate it very much. We try to do the same thing, stream in whenever you all are having services and even doing your Bible study. Thank you very much. And we also appreciate all the pastors here at the CSRA, those of you who stream in and, and view this broadcast. We thank you very much as well. To our Raymond family who was not here, because I know we're still practicing our social distancing. I'm looking around the room today. Boy, I'm telling y'all looking good up in here today. Y'all doing real good. Amen. I would love to get to the point where everybody would be able to come back to church and we can fill every seat in this house. Amen. Praise the name of Jesus. To all our covenant churches that are also streaming in and viewing in, appreciate you very much. We love you, appreciate you. Always keep you in our prayers. To all our extended brothers and sisters, we love you. God bless and God keep you all. And we are now getting ready to get into the scripture. I ask everyone to turn with me to the book of St. Matthew's Gospel, chapter uh, 13. And we're going to look at verses 18 through 23. 18 through 23. Amen. And I want to start, we're going to read the scripture, then I'm going to let you sit down. And I still want to uh, uh, thank God for uh, others as well. Uh, in verse 18, notice what it says here. And we have been reading this for the past months now, I should say. It says, Hear ye therefore the parable of the sword. When anyone heareth the word of the kingdom and understandeth not, then cometh the wicked one and catch away that which was sown in his heart. This is he which received seed by the wayside. But he that received seed into stony places, the same as he that heard the word and the known with joy received it. Yet had he not rooted in himself, but do it for a while. For when tribulation or persecution arises because of the word, by and by he is offended. He also that received seed among the thorns is he that heard the word and the, and the cares of this world and the deceitfulness of riches choke the word and he become unfruitful. But he that received seed into good ground is he that heard the word and understand it, which also bear fruit and bring forth some a hundredfold, some sixty and some thirty. And may the Lord have a blessing to the readers, hearers, and doers of his holy word. And all of God's people say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of our life-changing King of kings and Lord of lords. 
Also, I just want to thank you, uh, our ASMP family. I haven't forgotten you. Thank you all for streaming in as well. And I appreciate your encouragement. And when I do see you, you will always encourage me, let me know you're streaming in or you have streamed in. And thank you very much. Appreciate it very much. Uh, praise the name of Jesus. Also, I want to thank that beautiful praise and worship that went on this morning. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Now, Elder Jacob said that the, the reason why it went so well was because you all from North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I just think it was just God's anointing according to that. North Carolina had nothing to do with it. And, uh, amen. I'm blessed with you know I am. But that was awesome. You know, you, you know how we always say God always have a ram in the bush. Yes, sir. But I want to say this, you know, uh when when uh Isaac asked Abraham, he said, Father, here is the fire. Well, here's the wood. He said, Well, where is the sacrifice? And he said, the Lord, Abraham, no, did I say it right, Abraham? Abraham said, the Lord will provide Amen. a sacrifice for himself. Amen. Now, I don't call you all a sacrifice in terms of someone being slain, but one according to Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Paul said, I beg you, I urge you, I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living, living sacrifice. sacrifice. Amen. Holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. This is your reasonable service. Amen. And then he said, and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. Amen. But I believe we have seen the good, acceptable, and perfect on today. Amen. And I'm Amen. grateful for you all. God bless you. Let's thank God for him once again. Amen. Awesome. Praise the name of Jesus. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. And once again, thank you all for uh, taking this time to come out and to worship. Don't you know this is an ind individual thing? You coming out and worship, that's an individual thing. That's just showing your relationship with God. That's showing that you want to come and hear the word. You want to congregate amongst the saints of God. You all know what the Bible tells us, right? In the book of Hebrews, chapter 10. Y'all know what it says, right? You can turn there if you want to. Uh, because I know uh, a lot of people now, they try to get back to normalcy. You know, they try to open up everything. They're trying to open up the theaters, the theme parks, and and more stores and restaurants where people can come in and sit down and, and eat and fellowship or whatever, have fun. And that's because of the shots that everybody's taking. No, I'm not promoting the shots, but what I'm trying to get my point is, they're trying to get back to some normalcy, but at the same time, we still got to use the wisdom of God no matter what we do. And that's why we still practice social distancing, and that's why I'm so glad to see you all here this morning. You're looking well, you're doing well. But the scripture tells us in Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 25, well, let me read verse 24. It says, and let us not, and, and I'm sorry, and let us consider one another to provoke unto love and to good works. And this is what we do when we come together. We want to provoke one another unto love and to good works. And verse 25 says, not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together. As the matter of some years, some people done, done shut down the churches. I, I, I'm being honest with you. Some people not have, don't want to go back to church because they figure now we got live streaming. Why do we need to go to church? Well, see, what if the live streaming go out? Then what you gonna do? What if there is no more telephone? What if there's there there's no more a uh, way to get the gospel out in your in your local area? Now it's the time for you to start coming back together. It says, not forsaken the assembly of ourselves together as the matter some is. Some have forsaken. Some have given up the church. All because of the technology. And it says, but exalting one another. This is where you come to be exalted. This is how we can exalt one another. You know one thing I love? I, I know that what we try to do, we try to do this in a wise manner, is that when, we, when the service is over, we, we fellowship with one another. Which is a good thing. But that is a time, too, that you will take a moment to exalt one another, encourage one another, and share with one another what you learned from the message that day. Amen. Thank you for.
for the one amen. amen. For those that that person who is getting this message, all of y'all should have been saying amen. Because you should be getting something from the word. Yes, sir. Amen. You know, another thing too, let me say this. Because see, you know, we have put this out over and over and over and over. One of the ways for you to exalt someone while we're live streaming and while you are streaming in, if you got your cell phone or computer, however you're streaming in, share the message. Yes. This is a way for you to witness. Right. That's why right. I share the message. Some of y'all got a thousand followers and don't want to share the message with no one. Come on, come on. Y'all know what I'm talking about. Say I'm that. telling you, you're not promoting me. Right. I'm promoting Christ. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not magnifying me. I'm magnifying Christ. Yes, you're not glorifying me. I'm glorifying Christ. I'm not preaching my message. I'm preaching his message. Amen. This is not my story, but this is his story. Yes, sir. This is what it's all about. Getting the gospel of Jesus Christ out. Amen. So people can hear the word and hear the truth. People are tired of, of the shucking and diving and the hooping and hollering. People want to hear some word now. Come on. That's right. I have ran into so many people say, Pastor, I'm grateful for the word. That's what we need. We need teaching. We need word. You know, which has time out for this foolishness. But the only way this gospel is going to get out unless y'all help, help us get it out. Amen. So when Amen. you're streaming in on Wednesday, when you're streaming in on Sunday, hit that share button and share it with everyone. Come on, say that. Get the gospel out. And this is a way that you can continue to exalt one another. And so much the more as you see that they are approaching. If y'all are not watching the news, if y'all are not listening to what's going on around you, I'm telling you, you are not, you, 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 you fail to realize the people who are dying around us. A lot of, of our millenniums are dying. Mm -hmm. You know, black on black crime, I'm not afraid to say it. Right. You know, police brutality, I'm not afraid to say it. Right. People are just dying. And this COVID-19 uh, is still taking people out of this yeah. world. Mm -hmm. right. Y'all heard about what happened over in India. Mm -hmm. um, another uh, a widespread of the covid uh, it's just taking people out. They're begging folks to send, uh, you know, vaccine and send help and send people, send, send uh, help so they can fight against it. They do not have enough help to um, assist the people that, have, that got the coronavirus. Mm. If you watch what's going on, I, yesterday, my wife and I, we went down to my hometown and I funeralized and did the eulogy of my aunt. And this is my second aunt. I had a eulogy this year. People are dying around us. And we think that as long as I got my salvation, mm. as long as I'm okay, as long as my family okay, as long as we got food, I'm all right. As long as I know I'm going to heaven, everything is all right. No, it's not all right. Jesus did not save you just to be saved in your own little world. Come on, say that. Yes, sir. That's good. Jesus didn't come to die for one or two people or a couple of families. He died for the world. And we're right. supposed to be producing the fruit. The fruit that I'm talking about producing is not just the fruit of the Spirit. That should be the character you should always have by having the Holy Spirit of God in you. Come on. But when you start talking about producing fruit, if you are that, uh, if you are the uh, one whom the seed of God has failed to grip good ground, you should be producing that. Amen. You're the branch. Christ is the vine. And long we're attached to him, we should be producing. You should be bringing others into the kingdom of God. Amen. Come on. And if you don't want to open your mouth to start telling somebody about Jesus, sad on your part. You're not that living sacrifice. Say I'm that. Come on. Jury. Come on. Say that. Amen. Now we got to say amen. Yes, sir. Come on. Because he said, well done. Amen. When it's all said and done. Because we got to get the gospel out. And just to ask the congregation, hit the share button to share. You don't even want to do that. Come on, say that again. You're right about that. You need to judge yourself. We're trying to get the gospel out. It's about Jesus. Come on. Man. That's who we preach. Death, burial, and resurrection. At the funeral, after I got through doing the eulogy, funeral that lasts no more than about 30, 35 minutes max. At the end of the funeral, at the end of my message, I gave the, the sinner's prayer. I gave the call for salvation. I asked everybody to repeat this message after me. Repeat these words. And coming from Romans chapter 10, verse 9 and 10, I want everybody to know that Jesus died for your sin. You've got to be saved. Amen. Yes, sir. 
Now, if you don't do that when you go home to your people, that's shame on you. You need to be telling somebody about Jesus. People are dying around us all the time. And I just found out just recently, just past a Friday, that a, one of the officers that I work with passed, died of a heart attack. Mm. And I see this guy all the time, talk to him. And I said to myself, God, did I make an impact in this person's life? When he heard me share the gospel, and as I was sharing the gospel, did I make sure that he got the gospel? People are dying around us, and we are the one that's supposed to be bringing forth fruit, some 30, some 60, some 100-fold. But if you're not doing it, people, God, you need to go back and examine yourself. Come you on. need to go back and check yourself. Come on. Too many people are dying. If you watch the news, you will see more people. It's like more people have died this year than it was last year during the COVID. We know COVID took out a lot of people. I'm just talking about by other uh, underlying uh, situations, not just COVID. People are dying. And what do we do as to ask the saints of God? We sit back, enjoy our salvation, go on our vacation, and just think that, hey, everything is all right. Mm. People, it's time for us to wake up. Come on. It's time for us to get the gospel out. It's not time for us to still tell people about Jesus Christ and him crucified. Yes, sir. Amen. 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 Yes, sir. Amen. 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 We need to wake up, people. Amen. We need to wake up. And we need to get to the point where we can begin to get back into the church. And you all know, and I told you all this before. If I find that one person got sick in the church, I'll shut the church, the church down. But I'm grateful seeing all of y'all in here wearing your masks. And you know we got sanitation stations set up. And you all are social distancing. I'm grateful for that. And I know so, uh, several of you have gotten your, va your vaccine, your vaccination. I got mine. And this is one of the things that's supposed to help us. But I'm not telling you to do it because I did it. You've got to make the choice yourself. It's just like the gospel. Yes, you know, you got to make the choice whether you're going to receive this word or reject this word. Yes, Come on. Either the word I'm saying to you right now is all about the wayside. Or it fallen, it had fell among thorn, uh, 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 stone, and uh, fell in stony places, or fell among thorns, or and what I'm saying to you is it falling on good ground? Because every heart that hears and understands and do, your foundation is solid, and you will produce fruit. That's what the Bible says. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What the Bible says. The only thing that's going to keep us in this time is the word of God. Yes, Come on. That's the only thing that kept me. God's grace and his mercy, his word. And you all know I told you back in July the 13th, I'll never forget that day. 2020, I thought I was going to leave this world because of COVID. And I was in the hospital, didn't know which breath was going to be my last one. But through the mercy of God and then through speaking his word, God walked me out. Amen. And this is what we're trying to get the world to do. See, here's the thing. If you read the scripture, the majority of the people that got healed, Jesus asked them, do you believe I can do this? And then he said, your faith has made me whole. Come on. Yes, sir. He asked them. There were some that, that even that he, Jesus had to go off the faith of the parents. Of the faith of the loved one. The woman, the woman whose daughter was possessed with the demon. And she, she asked the Lord, Lord, will you help me? Jesus didn't say nothing. She pressed the Lord again, will you help me? Jesus said, it's not meat for me to give the children's bread to the dog. She said, yay, Lord, but even the dogs eat the crumbs from the rich man's table, or from the master's table. That's right, that's then right. Jesus said, woman, great is thy faithfulness. Yes, sir. And the minute she spoke that, her daughter was healed. Because the daughter could not go to Jesus uh, uh, herself, but she interceded on her on her behalf, went to the Lord, and the Lord saw her faith, and he said, Great is thy faith. Amen. Amen. The centurion who sent out the servants, and he said, Just speak the word, my servant be healed. Jesus said, I have not found no greater faith, no, not in Israel, because of the people's faith. Mm. And then when he healed the blind man, and then it was according to that faith. The lame man, he asked him, he said, how long have you been here? 38 years. He said, you want to make, you, you, do you want to be made whole? He said, well, listen, I ain't got nobody to put me in the pool. All right. 
Jesus said, I didn't ask you that. I want to know, do you want to be made whole? And then he said, yes, Lord. And he believed the Lord. He said, no faith. Now take up your bed and walk. Come on, come on. The Bible said, whenever they tried to get into the house and Jesus, and Jesus was preaching, and the Bible said, since they couldn't get in the door, they had to get on top of the roof and let the man down who was paralyzed. And the Bible said, when the Lord saw their faith, he said, thy sins are, are be forgiven thee. Come on. And then they had you know, so scribes and Pharisees, you know, somebody religious always got to say something about what you're doing Come on. according to the word of Come God. Come on, say that, then say Jesus that. Jesus said, to show you that the Son of Man has power on this earth mm -hmm. to forgive the sin, I will tell this man, now take up your bed and walk. Oh, yes, Come See, on. you couldn't get the other part, now get this part. Get up, man, go take up your bed and walk. Come on. The man took up bed and, went, and, and, uh, and he went. He, the Bible said he was sick of the palsy. Yep. And you got to get to a point in your life where you are sick of the boss. Sick of being paralyzed. Come on. Come on. That's sick of good. being carried around. Sick of the way no other folks. Sick of being the one who you got to wait until somebody else can help you. You got to get to a point where you say, I am sick of the boss. Come on. Amen. Come on. Amen. Come on, sir. You got to get to that point in life. Come on. I don't want to depend on people. I don't want to depend on, you know, if my paycheck is predicated upon if I say the right things to you. It's like this. If you don't give of your tithes and offering, if you don't support the ministry, God said, listen, I done commanded somebody else to feed you. I know how to bless you. If God can cause water to come out of a rock, if he can use a raven to feed a man of God, come on, he come on. a woman who only had enough meal and enough oil Come on. And the man of God said, listen, make your little cake first and bring me some water. And you'll have more than enough to the rain come. Come and on. God said, the only thing you have to do is trust me. Yes. Amen. 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 You don't have to use help listen, people. Listen. Y'all messed mess up my message anyway. I'm going to stay right here. <laughs> listen, people. You don't have to depend on people if you trust in God. That's, That's right. right. Come on. Paul first, 21 and 1 said, the king's heart is in the hand of the Lord. As the rivers of water, he turned wherever he wanted to go. If he got the king's heart, he has every subordinate in the heart. Amen. Amen. God said, listen, I'm the one that promote people. Psalm 75, 6 and 7. Promotion does not come from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. He said, God is the judge. He set it down one and raised something up. Come on. So who do we worry about? See, sometimes because we don't see God, we think God is not real and he's not working. Let me tell you some people, Hebrews 11 and 6 still tells me, but without faith it, it is impossible to please him. He that comes to God must believe that he is and that he is a reward. But then that diligently seek him. Yes, sir. So what do you do when your brook dries up? Come on. God said, I commanded the widow. And don't you know Elijah stayed with that widow and her son until the rain came? Yes. Go back and read your Bible. I was reading that. I'm like, whoa. He stayed with the woman. So he was able to eat until the rain came. I said, look at this. He said, I have commanded the widow to feed you. And you know what? It's like this. And I see this happen in, in our life. My wife can testify. It's like every time when it seems like our brook is being dried up, God has commanded somebody else to bless us. I'm telling you, if you never experienced that, that, that maybe you need to uh, 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 check and see if you're bearing fruit. Uh, you need to, you need to uh, examine yourself, like the Bible said. Examine yourself to see if you're in the faith, to see if you're a reprobate. Come on. You got to, baby, you got to know God, people. Listen, I did not change my life because I wanted to stop sinning. I don't think you changed your life because you wanted to stop sinning. I believe we changed our life because when God spoke to us and gave us his word, we answered the call. The Holy Spirit conviction came upon our life. And we said, Lord, I'm a sinner. Forgive me. I accept Jesus, my Lord and Savior. That's who changed us. And that's how we was chosen. It's not, it was not just by happenstance that I all of a sudden didn't want to live a, 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 a ungodly life. But I needed God to come in because God was the only one that changed me. And look at it this way. Being a Christian, sometimes
sometimes this old flesh still wants to sin against God. On, and if this flesh on. still want to sin against God as a Christian, what makes you think we want to change when we was a sinner? Man. It got to be a God. He that come to God must believe that he is and he exists. He's alive and he sits on the throne. He's the creator of heaven and earth and all the inhabitants of it. You got to know God is God. Amen. Yeah. You know, and even as I was saying about uh, this beautiful, all these beautiful young ladies that were up there seeing, you know, it was not, not so much they was a, a sacrifice, but they had presented themselves. Amen. Yes, sir. A living sacrifice. Amen. They didn't have to be here. You didn't have to be here. Amen. Yes, sir. But they presented themselves. Amen. Yes, sir. A living sacrifice. Yes, you who are here today, you presented yourself. You could be laid up in the bed drinking coffee, eating uh, grits and eggs or, 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 or waffles or whatever it is, pancakes. Or you could have been at the IHOP and down there trying to scream in. <laughs> you know how some people do it. Now, let me tell you something else some of y'all do. You don't, think, don't think the Holy Ghost don't know. Some people turn turn it on, and while the live stream is going on, you do another thing. <laughs> y'all got quiet on me. I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Who are you fooling? The Bible said, be not deceived. God is not mocked. What shall the man sow? That's what he shall also reap. Come if on. you sow to the flesh of the flesh, you shall reap corruption. If you sow to the spirit of the spirit, you reap life everlasting. Amen. And you want to know why your life the way it is. Because when you start rejecting the word, when you don't want to hear, and when you don't want to understand, no fruit will be produced in your life. Amen. Yes, sir. You turn it on and then walk away. You got to stay there and listen. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. he, let, he that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying unto the church. Amen. Y'all have made me get in my apostle mode. Come on, come on. In my bishop mode. Amen. I want to be a pastor, a teacher, continue to teach, but I need to preach to them this morning. Yes, sir. Amen. Come on. Because it is imperative for all of us to begin to get the gospel out, Jesus did not save you for you just to be saved and that's it. And you sit back on your stool or do nothing and don't tell somebody else about Jesus Christ. Come on. you got to tell people about the Lord. And I'm finding out also another brother that we knew that passed away. Mm -hmm. yeah. People of God, listen, life is too short. We got to get the word of God out. Yes, sir. And to ask the people of God to do something as simple as share, get the gospel out, it's a hard task for some people. Mm -hmm. It's very hard. Firstly, be asking y'all, hey, listen, if you heard something good, send a praise up. Say amen. You only have about two or three people that would do that. Mm -hmm. So I guess the word does not mean anything to anybody else. But that's also showing, too, that, listen, I'm listening. I hear what God is saying. Every time I go to church, when the preacher getting up, is getting ready to get up and preach, whether it's male or female, I am saying, God, I want to hear what you have for me. Amen. 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 Because one word from God can change your whole life. Amen. 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 You don't believe that? Ask Peter. Peter said, Lord, if it be thou, bid me to come unto thee on the water. Jesus said one word. He said, come. That changed Peter's whole life. Yes, sir. He got off the boat and began, he got off the ship and began to walk on, on the water to go to Jesus. Only two people have been recorded in history to walk on water. Jesus and Peter. Yes, sir. But see, we got to stay focused. And because the, and, the storm is already going on. While he was in the boat. But he just saw the boisterous wind. But you know some of the people of God, only thing he had to do was keep walking. Don't you know you hear boisterous wind all the time? Girl, you ain't about nothing. Boy, you ain't gonna mount to a, 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 a hill of beans. Ain't nobody ever done that. You ain't gonna get that. Get married to who? House wind. <laughs> you ain't qualified for that job. Come on, sir. You're not gonna get this. Uh, healing. 
Look, that was that was doing the old time healing this right now. Hey, Amen. Say that. Come on. Come on. Come on. Right come on. Right now. Come on. I know. So we all can testify to that. So we all can face death. Just like I say, death. I saw death. I looked death dead in the face, and I said, Death, you got to go. My, it's not my time. Like come Jesus on. did. Jesus, every time they try to kill Jesus, Jesus said, It's not my time. Come on, come on now. There's a time to be born, there's a time to die, but not right now. Come on, that's good. I'm going to keep living so I can fight another day. God knows I want, God, see, I don't want nobody to take me out of this world when this is God. Yes, sir. Uh, come on. Too many young people died from, from gun violence. And it, it, even this disease itself. People of God, we got to wake up. We got to know that God is God. We got to continue to trust God. We got to know and we got to tell somebody else. It's one thing you being saved, but just think about this. Don't you know, and, and the minister, find the scripture for me, Minister Kerry, and I, I, I'm trying to preach and bring scriptures up at the same time. But don't you know, the Bible says, he that turned a sinner from his ways, he has saved and delivered a multitude. Mm. A multitude yes, of sin, of sin, because you uh, decided to tell somebody about Christ and they turn away from sin, you have delivered that person from a multitude of sin. And they, you know, that's in your Bible. James 5, 20. Y'all look at James 5 and 20. Listen to what it says. Look at James 5 and 20. Man, I came in here to talk about something else today. Look at verse 19. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth and one convert him, let him know that he which converted the sinner from the error of his way shall save a soul from death and shall hide a multitude of sin. You can save a person from death. Don't you know when every person you lead to Christ and when that person ends up meeting, getting glory, you get the glory. I can only surmise this. I can't say this exactly what happened. I believe those people can say, thank you, man. Thank you for telling me about the gospel. Amen. Thank you for telling me about Jesus. Amen. Thank you for leading me to the Christ. If you do that to one sinner, the Bible even said that the shepherd leaves the 99 and look for the one that is lost. Amen. Come on. And Jesus then gave up the Holy Ghost, and we scared to tell somebody. We scared to tell our own, own our family members. Come on. And then the main one, you should want to be saved. Mm -hmm. Come on. At the funeral yesterday, I was telling my, 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 my wife, I said, honey, all these out here are kid folks. All of us are tied in, and we're, and we're related one way or another. I said, let's pray. You are a prayer, son of prayer. Every time we have family reunion, every time we have gathering, I've always done this. After my brother funeral, my third older brother funeral, I had, my, I had all my family in my sister-in-law uh, 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 home down in, in South Carolina, and we were there. I told all of them I loved them, and I made sure we all knew Jesus. People of God, listen, if you're talking about bearing fruit, bearing fruit is just not, it, it, it's not just the fruit of the Spirit. That's showing you that you have the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's showing that you have the character. If you got the Holy Spirit and have the character, now you should be bearing fruit. Come I'm on. talking about telling others about Jesus Christ. Amen. Let me read this one more time. Verse James 5, thank you, Minister Carey. James 5, verse 19 and 20. Brethren, if any of you do err from the truth, and one converts him. If someone errs from the truth, and this sounds like somebody who's been saved. And then that's what it sounds like. This is exactly what it sounds like. Somebody who errs from the truth, and you go back and convert that brother and get him back on the path, get him back in line, let him know that he which converted the sinner. Call him a sinner because he was in sin. From the error of his way shall save a soul from death. You just save that soul from death. Mm -hmm. 
and shall hide a multitude of sin. Amen. Mm. If you don't get that in your spirit, I don't even know people, I don't even know what else to tell you. Yes, sir. Good. People of God, it is time out for playing. It is time that we get the gospel out. Oh, y'all can invite people to church. There's nothing wrong with that. I'm grateful for all the people y'all invite to church. To church, I'm grateful for Chris to invite this family out to church. And thank you. I appreciate all of y'all who do that. Amen. But we got to tell. Listen, if you don't know how to tell them, bring them to church. I tell them. <laughs> I promise you, I tell them. I'll tell them about Jesus. Amen. I'll make sure they get the gospel. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And if they don't come back, at least the seed was planted. Amen. Yes, come on yes, now. They got the gospel. I mean, I don't sit here preach money. Oh, yeah, I'm going to teach you about, uh, you know, giving and your relationship with God is, is based on, you know, you, you giving as well. But I want to tell you about Jesus because when it's all said and done, your money, your house, your car, your honey, all that's going to be left back. Yes, sir. That's right. Yes, sir. When it's all said and done, but one thing for sure you can take with you. Number one, having Jesus Christ. Number two, all the great works that you've done, it won't be in vain. You know why? The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 57, 58, it says, But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Then he said, Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as ye know, your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Your labor, every time you tell somebody about Christ, your labor, every time you share the gospel by hitting that share button, your labor, every time you tell your neighbor, your labor, every time you tell your family, your labor, every time you just talk to a stranger, and you tell them about Jesus Christ, your labor is not in vain at all. The work you do for Christ, it will last. Yes, sir. Amen. We're not working for our salvation, but after we get saved, we work to show that we are saved and Come we on. do have salvation. Amen. Because the scripture tells us in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 8 and 9, for by grace are you saved through faith, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works. Let's any man should boast. And why do you think that you can work your way into heaven if you can work your way into heaven? Jesus died was in vain. That's right. Come on now. Amen. Titus 3 and 5 said, Not by works of righteousness which we have done, but according to his mercy, he saved us by the washing of our regeneration and renewing of the Holy Ghost. It's not by the works that brings us eternal salvation, but after we get saved, now we start working so our labor won't be in vain and we will get our reward. Amen. Yeah, amen. You don't believe that? Look at 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Y'all going to mess my message up. Elder Jacob did that today, y'all. I'm playing Elder Jacob. Elder Jacob, I don't know why you're messing my message up today. Every time I come up here, I'm so ready. i got stuff, man, I could preach for years. Yes, sir. Yes, Thank sir. you very much, Elder. Amen. Amen. But when I get this unction to function under the auspice of the Holy Ghost, I just got to stay in that flow. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, listen what it says here in verse 11. It says, for other foundation can no man lay than that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He is the foundation. If you try to lay anything else, it's just sand. It's not solid. And it, then he goes on and says, verse 12, are you in 1 Corinthians 3 yes, yes. and 12? Yes. Now, if any man build on this foundation, what did I tell you about the foundation? According to Matthew's Gospel, chapter 7, 21 through 24, he said, The wise man hear and do, and he lays a solid foundation to build his house. The foolish man hear and don't do, and he builds his house on the sand. But when the wind, rain, and flood hit both houses, the house that was on the rock, it stood, but the house that was built on the sand, the Bible said, it fell, and great was the fall of it. 
So when you are going through this, going through the vicissitudes of life, life changes, things that happen in your life, and when it seems like things begin to be swept from under you, you better check your foundation. Amen. Yes, sir. Because you heard me say this before. The wind, rain, and flood hit both houses. One stood and other one and other one was this, was destroyed. And it's not that the thing is not the things that come in our life to destroy us, but it's the things that we got to look at our foundation, see if we are built on Christ, the solid rock. Jesus said, upon this rock, I'll build my church. And the man built his house on the rock. Yes, sir. And the foundation was predicated upon him hearing and doing. When it comes to the fruit, it comes and it's predicated upon hearing and understanding. Amen. Because if you understand, now you know to go and produce some fruit. But here he says, now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, what foundation? Verse 11, for other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. He is the foundation. Now if you take this foundation and build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone. Let me, put, let me stop right there. Those are the good works. Those are the perpetual works. Those are things that will last. Those are things that have been tried in the fire. Yes, it might lose its shape, but it won't lose its weight nor value. Yes, because when it goes through the fire, yes, it's got to be purified. Every work that we do, it's got to go through the fire in the day of judgment. I'm going to show you this in the scripture. Now, in the man built upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stone, all these things were built by fire. Do you hear me? Now watch this. Then he said what? Wood, hay, stubble. What happened when you throw wood, hay, and stubble in the fire? It burns and it becomes ashes. Unless you're a great salesman. Listen, ashes carry no value. I don't care what you say. I can use it for milk and put it in, put it in my flower bed. Okay, go ahead. That's what you want to do. But I'm talking about eternal uh, rewards. Because when you put the wood head stubble into the fire, it burns. Yes, it carries no weight, no value. And what he is telling us here, he said, every good work, every bad work that we do is going to be judged. It's going to go through fire on that day of judgment. So if you are not working right now, here's the thing, people of God. Oh, yeah, you might be saved, but you're going to suffer loss of rewards. Uh, listen, hold your finger here, and I want you to turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. I'm coming back to 1 Corinthians 3. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Let me qualify another point here. No, go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, not, not chapter 10. Go to 2 Corinthians chapter 5, we're going to read verse 10. Amen. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, and we're going to read verse 10. Amen. Are you there? Yes, sir. Yes. Now listen. For we, for we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. The term judgment seat of Christ is a term that is used, it's a qualified term that is used for every believer that would be judged in the day of judgment. The great white throne, and even when the Lord separates the nations, but even at the great white throne, that's the judgment of the ungodly and the sinner, where they're going to show the books were there and the book of life was there, and if your name was not found written in the book of life, you were cast into the lake of fire. Mm. But at this judgment seat here, this is the... Um, this is where the believer's work will be judged at the judgment seat of Christ. And this judgment seat of Christ is found twice. You'll find it here. Uh, and also you're going to find it in first uh, in, uh, in uh, um, Romans chapter 14. But you're also going to find this, this same term in other places, judgment seat. But I'm talking about judgment seat of Christ. You're going to find it here. You're going to find it in Romans chapter 14. But you will see the terms, the words judgment seat in other areas in the Bible. Do y'all follow me? Y'all understand what I just said? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. All right, good. Let me move on then. Now listen. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ that everyone may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be gold, silver, precious stone, good or bad, wood, hay, and stubble. 
Are y'all following me? Are y'all with me? Yep. Give me three more amen. 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 All right, good. Thank you. So y'all what y'all with me? Do you see this? Now watch this. Listen to verse 11. And this is where we miss it. It says, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. Do we? If we know what judgment is coming, if we know that people will be will die and go to hell, if we know that God's judgment is coming and we're going to be judged according to everything we've done, whether it was good or bad, do we really persuade men? I was talking to a guy in the store, a uh, grocery store, um, when it was Friday, I believe, and we was talking about you know, being above ground is always a good thing. I said, man, you are so right. I said, you know, I thank God for that. And uh, we got to talk, they got to conversing. And then, uh, you know, I said, with long life, according to Psalms 91, 16, with long life, he satisfied us and showed us his salvation. But then I had to go a little further. I said, it's good that we're alive. Mm -hmm. But I said, but when we do go through the portals of death and the grave, it ain't nothing wrong being with the Lord either. Amen, amen. Paul says, as long as we're in this body, we're absent from the Lord. We're not with the Lord. Mm -hmm. I'm talking about in his presence. Right. I'm not talking about the Holy Spirit not with us. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm not saying that the Lord has left us and forsaken us. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I think y'all were singing that today. Y'all were singing that. And I'm grateful you brought that out, uh, honey. You bring it out the scripture according to Hebrews chapter 13, verse 5 and 6. It says, uh, let your conversation be without covetousness and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. So we can stand boldly and say, the Lord is my helper and I will not fear what man shall do unto me. Yes, sir. He will never leave us nor forsake us. He's always there. But what Paul was saying, as long as we are in this body, we are absent from his presence being in his physical presence, but he said, absent from this body, then we are present with the Lord. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But don't you know here, knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. And then when, that, when we continue our conversation, and I was telling him, I said, listen, I said, even though it's, we, we're above ground, but I said, even if we go under the ground, we still got to be ready to meet him. Amen. And I said, it's nothing wrong with being with the Lord. Amen. 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 I know, see, death is part of life. And one thing about death, death doesn't have the final word. Mm. But death and life are in the power of your tongue. Come on now. They that love it shall eat the fruit thereof. Whatever you say you got to deal with the consequences of your words. Come on. You can speak life to yourself like I did when I was laying up in that hospital. I had to speak life back to myself. Or you can sit there and don't say a word and just let death continue to knock on your door. You got to open your mouth and say something. Come on. Come on. Jesus said, if you open your mouth and tell the mountain to move, the mountain got to move. The woman that had the issue of blood, she said within herself, if I can just touch but his clothes, I shall be made whole. And she did. People, you got to learn how to open your mouth. Yes, sir. Let me finish this. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men, but we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest, manifest in your conscience. And I would go on, but just for sake of time, because I know we, we still got to do communion. I want to show you this. You see where we all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ, believers. Amen. Now go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Verse 11 again. For other foundation can no man lay that is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now if any man build upon this foundation, gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, stubble, every man's work shall be made manifest. Your work's going to be revealed. This is what he's saying. Every man's work shall be made manifest for the day, the judgment day shall declare it because it shall be revealed how? By fire. 
everything, gold, silver, precious stone, your good works, wood, head, stuff, the bad works, all your works, everything that you've done, where the opportunity you had to share Christ with someone, and you didn't, the Holy Spirit was trying to tell you to do it, and you didn't, even the opportunity you had to give, and you didn't, the opportunity you had to, 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 to love your enemy, and if your enemy was hungry to feed them, it was thirst, give them to drink, and if you didn't do it, everything, and plus all the good things you did, you shared the gospel, you told somebody, you helped somebody. When Jesus was naked, you, you clothed him. When he was hungry, you fed him. He was thirsty, you gave him drink. He was in the hospital, you visited him. He was in prison, you ministered to him. He said, then when, then the right said, when so we did in all these situations? Jesus said, if you have done this to the least of these, my brother, if you've done it to one, yes, sir. you did it unto me. The shepherd always leaves the 99, look for the one. And we who go and convert one sinner, mm. we have hid a multitude of sin. And see, one thing about, about saints sometimes, Christian folk, I, I, I call them religious. Mm -hmm. If a saint do something wrong, you got to go broadcast it and put it all out on Facebook. Come on now, come on. You got to tell everybody, let me tell you what the pastor did, he stole the money. <laughs> oh man, don't let the pastor do something wrong, man. Uh, I mean, it'll be over in Africa before you know it hit. Uh, it it circulate all around right in the United States. <laughs> but see, when the pastor sees somebody do something wrong, we keep you. Keep, we keep you covered. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. I ain't telling you about Amen. what you did. That's between you and the Lord. Now, since you shared this with me, let me tell you how to how to get over this. Come on, Amen. Some people love to spread myths, spread foolishness. That's right. But see, let, let me go on. Mm -hmm. Now, if any man build upon this foundation, goes to a precious stone, wood, his stuff, every man's work shall be made manifest, for the day shall declare it, because it shall be revealed by fire, and the fire shall what? Try, prove every man's work of what sort it is. Is it perpetual? Is it something that will be destroyed? Will it stand? Will it make it through the fire? Or will it be burned? This is what it says in verse 14. If any man's work abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If your works abide and, and, and remain once it goes through the fire, you're going to receive a reward. But if any man's work shall be burned, your wood, hay, and stubble, he shall what? Suffer loss. You had the opportunity to do good, but you didn't. You were caught up in yourself. You were worried about the three greatest people in your life, me, myself, and I. You didn't think about others. Yes, you were saved. You accepted Christ, but that's all you did. You were just saved and sat on your sofa and flipping cameras and didn't tell nobody about my, my Savior. Didn't tell no one about Jesus Christ. If any man works abide which he had built thereupon, he shall receive a reward. If any man's work shall be burned, he shall suffer loss, but he himself shall be saved, yet so as by fire. You're going to be saved just like one escaping the fire. Mm. People of God, it's time to wake up. Amen. It's time for us to get the gospel out. It's time for us to start doing what God called us to do. And all of us sitting in here with these titles. Mm -hmm. And you know, you got we got so many people out here now just thriving and bent on titles. Mm -hmm. And I'm an apostle. You just got saved. Right. You just started <laughs> church. Now you're apostle. Right. <laughs> Not the word. You haven't really sat under anybody yet that because somebody licensed you and now you got, got the title. Man, don't you know what an apostle is? That's a God called position. That's right. That's a God called ministry. Mm -hmm. Just like a pastor. Amen. That's a God called ministry. That's a God given gift. The apostles. I'm not saying everybody's not called to be one. There are some people here that, that's out here that God has truly called. And they carry the, the anointing and the favor and the and the fragrance of the apostle. Mm-hmm. An apostle is a special messenger That's right. That's right. that speaks revelation. Mm -hmm. But you know something? 
the one that everybody always rejects, the teacher. Say that. Come on. Come on, Pastor. If it wasn't for the teacher teaching you, come on. You couldn't be that professional basketball player or football player. Come on, Pastor. Or that lawyer. That's good. That doctor. That that business for that entrepreneur. It's the teacher that does that that really builds you up. That's right. Well, the teacher breaks it down so you have understanding. Come on. The pastor on. continue to watch over the sheep. Come on. The evangelists spread the gospel all over the world, but the evangelists also got to be able to send those people to some church. Come on. The prophet prophetically speak and say, what well, thus said the Lord, this is what the Lord said, this is what's going to happen. But yet those people still got to have some place to continue to grow in grace and not. But the apostle is the one that's a special messenger. He also is the one, or she also is the one, that not just only speak by revelation, but also go and build ministries. That's right. That's right. Paul said to Titus, let's go back through the cities where we done uh, established the church. Yes. He did that with Titus. He did that with Timothy. Let's go back through every city where we are preached, every church where we have established, let's go back. Let's go see them. They have a special care for worldwide ministry. And it's not limited to that. I'm just giving it to you in a nutshell. But all of them, they are for the perfecting of the saints, Amen. the work of the ministry, ministry. and for the edifying, edifying of the body. body. Amen. Before I take on any title, I want the grace, Amen. I want the anointing, I want the wisdom, the knowledge, the understanding, I want the mercy, I want all of that to precede me before I walk into those offices. Because some people prematurely get into those places and then they end up failing. Yeah. Because they allowed their title to puff them up. Mm -hmm. And they think now by having that title, now people's supposed to be drawn to them. Mm -hmm. Come on, Don't work like that. If God does not give you that drawing anointing, yeah, right. ain't nobody coming to you. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. That's good. I'm, I'm, I'm closing. My wife will tell you this. Uh, when we was at home yesterday, I stopped by one of my favorite restaurants I love eating in. And then, I, mean, I think, my, I had my mask on at the time. I had my mask on. We were sitting out waiting for our food to be fixed. And then I got up and I was wanting to check on our food. And one, there's two guys walked in. First of all, they looked at me. They said, man, you got to be a Lewis. Now, I don't know the guys. And the guy told me, he said, what I said. I said, well, how do you know that? He said, man, all you Lewis look just like it. He said, I went to school with your younger brother, my youngest brother who passed. I'm like, wow. I said, man, that's awesome. And this is what he said. He said, you are a pastor, aren't you? You are a preacher, aren't you? I said, well, how do you know that, man? It's just the way you carry yourself. I didn't say one word to him about, about preaching. I didn't even minister to him. He said, there's just something about you. The way you carry, he said, carry yourself like a preacher, like a man of God. Didn't he, honey? And I said, wow. And I told my wife, I said, honey, you know what's so sad sometimes? When other people recognize your gift right. and your own people don't even see it on you. I'm being straight. Jesus had the same problem. The Lord had the same problem. He said the ox know its master. All right. Just like the donkey and the horse knows its master. He said, but my own people don't even know who I am. Come on. Come on. People of God, listen. Let's wake up. The Bible says it's time for us to come up out of our sleep. It is time for us to wake up 
It's time for us to get the gospel out. Don't be one who is walking around here enjoying your salvation while you are on vacation. Father in heaven, thank you once again. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your people who listen and so attentively. And God, I'm asking that you stir us all up. And I pray that this word has stirred us up. That we can begin to get the gospel of Jesus Christ out. We can start sharing. We can start telling people about the love of God. And I'm grateful for the places you have sent me and even where I'm at where I can share the gospel continuously, all the time, every day, to the fifth sin flower, and even to those out here in the free world. Help us not to be mindful and just think about self. Help us think about the world that is dying around us who needs to hear Jesus Christ. Help us to let our light so shine before men that Men may see our good works and glorify the Father which is in heaven. And Father, we want to say thank you. And we praise you and we bless you. Thank you for stirring up our hearts and our mind and our spirit. Thank you, thank you, Father, for bringing us back to the original instructions. That you be glorified in our lives. And we thank you forevermore. In Jesus' name. Now, while your head still by and your eyes are closed, I give this invitation to those of you who are streaming in as well. If there's anyone here today who don't know Christ, and you want to be saved, you want to be heaven saved, you want to know that you have salvation, pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, I come to you now, confessing that I am a sinner. I ask you to forgive me of my sins and cleanse me from all unrighteousness, from all ungodliness. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. I believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, is the Son of God, whom God sent, whom God sent to, die on the cross to die on the cross for the sins of the whole world. For the sins of the whole world. He was buried. He was buried. And on the third day, and on the third day, God, God, you raised Jesus, you raised Jesus from, the dead from the dead for my righteousness. Jesus, Jesus, I do now. I confess you. I confess you. I accept you. I accept you. And I receive you. As my Lord, as my Lord, my Master, my master and, my and my Savior. Thank you, Thank you for, saving me for saving me and keeping my name, keeping my name in, the book of life. in the book of life. Now, if you believe that, give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. 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 It's all about Him. It's all about Him. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus. Amen. And once again, we thank you. Thank you all for streaming in. Appreciate each and every one of all of you out here in the congregation as well. We thank God for everyone. We are getting ready to partake in our communion. And we know those of you who are at home, we know that uh, you, will not, you will not be partaking with us. However, if you did decide you want to partake, you can still do that. Uh, you know, if you got your little cup and your little unleavened bread and your little juice, you can do so. But nevertheless, what we're getting ready to do, we're getting ready to sign off from our uh, live streaming. Thank you all for streaming in. We appreciate you very much. We love you, and we got God bless and God keep you all. And what we're getting ready to do now, we're getting ready to do have our communion. But I want you to start streaming in this Wednesday at 6.50. We're going to be coming to you live at 7 o'clock with our Wednesday evening Bible study. And you know you can go to our website, uh, rwcom.org. You'll find us there. And plus, when you go to Facebook, and I believe the only thing they have to do is put in there what Rainbow, how, Rainbow, not Rainbow, Rainbow Word Christian Outreach Ministry. 
guess what they have to do? You go to Facebook, put, it, put in Rainbow Word Christian Outreach Ministry. You'll pull us up. You'll see us coming to you uh, live streaming. I appreciate you very much. And hopefully and prayerfully, the Lord Terry has come to bless us to live. We'll be coming to you live on Wednesday. Until next time, we love you and appreciate you. And remember, it's all about Jesus. It's all about him. God bless you. We love you. And thank you so much for streaming in.